Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech, my name is Alan. In one of our last episodes, we did a video explaining why real-life firearms are superior to Star Wars blasters in most cases. Today, we'll be looking at the individuals carrying those weapons by comparing the United States Marine Corps and their nearest Star Wars equivalent, the Stormtroopers. We'll be breaking this down in two videos, so make sure you subscribe down below so you don't miss out on part two. In part one, we'll be comparing their training and organization. In part two, we'll be looking at their equipment, weapons, and combat doctrine. Full disclosure before we begin, I have never served in the Marines or the Stormtrooper Corps, therefore I have no inherent bias for or against either organization. I'm also not a Jedi or a cannibal, although I've been accused of both things because I'm on YouTube. The Stormtrooper Corps is technically a part of the Imperial Army, but unlike the rest of the Imperial Army, the Stormtrooper Corps has its own separate chain of command which reports directly to Emperor Palpatine. Sort of like how the Iraqi Republican Guard reported directly to Saddam Hussein. A Stormtrooper squad consisted of 10 men. Five of these squads made a platoon. Four platoons made a company, four companies made a battalion, and four battalions made a regiment. And lastly, a legion of 12,800 Stormtroopers was made out of four regiments. While Stormtroopers were used in all different types of situations, they were mainly deployed on Imperial class Star Destroyers at the legion level. The U.S. Marine Corps also has its own chain of command. This is led by the Commandant of the Marine Corps. The Commandant then falls under the administration of the Navy. The Marine Corps started as a maritime force used primarily to protect Colonial America's shipping interest and fledgling Navy. They also served as amphibious landing forces. Over the years, the U.S. Marines' mission began to change as American military leaders saw the potential of the U.S. Marines to be used as an expeditionary infantry force. The Marine Corps greatly expanded in size during World War I, and a Marine Brigade was sent along with American Expeditionary Forces to Europe where they served under the command of the U.S. Army in the 2nd Infantry Division. The Marine Corps Rifle Squad is larger than the Stormtrooper Corps with 12 Marines divided into three fire teams. A company usually had three or four platoons including rifle platoons and special weapons platoons which had support weaponry including machine guns, anti-tanks, and mortars. There's also a headquarter element. Typically there are four companies in a battalion and four battalions in a regiment and four regiments make a marine division, which is usually around 15,000 combat-oriented marines. This also includes around 8,000 support staff, although technically every marine is trained as a rifleman first. So a Stormtrooper Legion is roughly the same operation size as a marine division. Now, at first glance, the Stormtrooper Corps and Marine Corps seem to be quite similar in organization and purpose. Both organizations are separate branches of the military, but fall under the jurisdiction of a larger organization. Both organizations are also historically known for being posted on ships. The Stormtrooper Corps actually functions more like your traditional Marine or Space Marine. A good percentage of the Stormtrooper Corps is stationed on Star Destroyers and deployed as ground teams, oftentimes from assault landers and shuttles. They are also oftentimes used for boarding enemy ships. These are basically activities that a Space Marine is designed to take on. Meanwhile, the U.S. Marine Corps rarely ever is involved in amphibious assaults anymore and now function very much like a standard infantry combat unit. By function, the Marines are technically an expeditionary infantry force designed to enter combat quickly, and their strategy is more focused on robust rifle platoons using combined arms to supplement their firepower. One of the major disadvantages of the Stormtrooper Corps was the fact that they were part of the Army but stationed on naval ships. The culture and training differences between the Stormtrooper Corps and Navy oftentimes meant that the two organizations would clash. While Marines and sailors do occasionally butt heads when they're posted together, there usually is a very clear and structured chain of command. The same can't be said for Stormtroopers and the Imperial Navy. The Stormtrooper commander's authority oftentimes overlapped with the captain of the ship, which led to some very spirited arguments and confusing orders during combat. Now let's take a look at how these two organizations are perceived by the public and also by their enemies. Stormtroopers were seen as shock troopers and fanatically loyal to the Emperor. They were known to be extremely aggressive and ruthless in combat. Their white uniforms and helmets masked their identity, giving an aura of conformity, discipline, and precision. Rebel Alliance regular infantry units typically had a very high level of respect for the Stormtroopers' combat abilities. Irregular rebel units and resistance fighters typically hated and even feared the Stormtrooper Corps. Rebel propaganda films, however, typically portray Stormtroopers as extremely incompetent and having terrible aim. The stereotype for your average U.S. Marine is a physically imposing rifleman who is very aggressive during combat and has excellent marksmanship skills. They are also commonly portrayed as shock troops or the spearhead of every major American military operation. 
They're also seen as being poorly funded. They ride into battle on Navy ships, are using Army hand-me-down weapons, and call the Air Force for air support. These stereotypes seem to stem out of pop culture, Hollywood films, and at least the positive sides of the Marine Corps stereotypes stems out of their superb combat record during previous wars. But for the most part, these stereotypes do not take into account the rapidly changing role of the United States Military Corps in today's modern asymmetric battlefield. Stormtroopers were deployed all across the Empire as peacekeeping troops. While in the core regions of the Empire and in pro-Imperial worlds, the Stormtroopers were respected and even beloved. In the more troubled parts of the Empire, Stormtroopers were feared and even hated by the local populace. On some worlds, the civilians even engaged in terrorist activity and attacked Stormtroopers. The Marine Corps is generally beloved and respected by the American populace. It's not unusual for someone wearing the uniform to be given special treatment either by individuals or corporations. There is a very small minority of Americans who usually have extreme and radical political views that dislike the Marine Corps and also every military institution. But when U.S. Marines are deployed in other countries, especially places where they would be considered an occupying force, public opinion can vary a lot more and some extreme elements might even carry out terrorist attacks against the Marines. Because the United States is a lot smaller than the Galactic Empire and more unified, the U.S. Marines are generally never deployed on American soil. Stormtroopers, on the other hand, are typically deployed for civilian peacekeeping and pacifying classification missions. Fortunately, the Empire is large enough that most of the time stormtroopers do not have to be deployed in their home world. In general, most civilians do not have any access or experience with Marines or stormtroopers, so therefore the majority of their knowledge about them comes through popular media, which is full of stereotypes. The Stormtrooper Corps was originally completely made up of clone troopers, but as the Camino Cloning Center was shut down, the clones were gradually replaced with non-clones. The Stormtrooper Corps drew directly from Imperial Academies. The Empire's fascist drive to nationalize the military industrial complex and increase the size of the military made joining the Stormtrooper Corps a very lucrative job especially for individuals from poor outer rim planets. Therefore, Imperial Academies were typically seen as elite training schools and only the most skilled and talented humans could be accepted as a cadet. In reality, the standards were all over the place, especially as the war went on and corruption and war fatigue relaxed the standards for recruitment. For the most part, Stormtrooper recruiters looked out for individuals in between the ages of 18 and 30 who graduated in the top fifth of their class. It was also preferable that the recruits met height and weight standards. The Marine Corps has the highest physical standards for recruits when compared to other branches of the military. Marine recruits are required to fit a certain height and weight ratio, and those unable to pass the Marine Corps body composition test after a few attempts can risk being kicked out of the service. The Marine Corps is entirely made up of volunteers and haven't used draftees since the Vietnam War. A potential recruit needs to be in between the ages of 19 and 29 and have a high school diploma. But due to the United States' constant involvement in conflict over the last few decades, recruitment quotas have increased and the U.S. Marines recruiters have relaxed standards. Recruiters have been known to give waivers to individuals who usually are not eligible to serve in the Marines in order to fill a quota. The Stormtrooper Cadet has extremely structured training schedules which included physical exercise along with classes that covered a wide curriculum ranging from Imperial propaganda and history to infantry tactics and vehicle operations and identification. Stormtroopers also spent a lot of time in simulation training in different exercises and combat scenarios. Stormtrooper training had a heavy emphasis on getting rid of individuality and replacing that with conformity and obedience. Cadets were oftentimes referred to by their operating numbers and not their names. This was an attempt to dehumanize them, something that was used during the clone trooper era. Although women had a hard time meeting physical standards for the Stormtrooper Corps, there were women serving in the ranks. During training, they were placed in all female units. A Marine's day is also highly structured. The Corps is all about repetition and discipline, which involved every aspect of a Marine's life, whether that meant keeping your personal space clean or shaving every day or having a haircut every week. Boot camp lasts around 13 weeks and is separated into three phases. It involves grueling physical training along with classes that teach Marine regulation and Marine Corps history. There's also some basic combat skills which are taught with a focus on rifle marksmanship. Upon graduation, every Marine will go to the School of Infantry. The Infantry Marines will go to something known as the Infantry Training Battalion, whereas the non-Infantry Marines will go to something known as Marine Combat Training. As you can see, either way, every Marine, even admins and cooks, are expected to know how to operate as an infantry fighter, which is especially important in today's asymmetric war zones. While at the Academy, a Stormtrooper can be selected for a more specialized role, whether that be fighting in certain types of environments or operating certain types of weapons. 
There are units like the Shore Defender Troopers, who are focused on amphibious defense. They can be identified by their beige-colored armor. Then there are Cold Weather Assault Troopers, who learn how to operate in freezing climates and use specialized climate-controlled Stormtrooper armor. There are also Stormtroopers trained to use special weapons like flamethrowers, jetpacks, and rocket launchers. Now back to the Marine Corps. Every infantry Marine has to undergo training as a rifleman. It's a 59-day course, and after that they can undergo further specialization as a machine gunner, mortarman, anti-tank specialist, LAV crewman, and so on. Where the Stormtrooper Corps differs is that the Empire spends a lot of time indoctrinating them in Imperial propaganda. While the Marine Corps does instill a sense of patriotism and pro-American values into its soldiers, it's more heavily focused on creating an extremely aggressive infantryman. The Marine Corps also, for some reason, will always attract individuals looking for combat. Well, there you have it guys. We've set the ground for our next video where we will be looking at the weapons and equipment along with the combat proficiency of these two organizations. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on that next video. And also guys, I'd love to hear your opinions on who you think will come out on top in our next video. Well guys, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.